Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, if the people that uh, out there like myself and most of you out there that are trying to get cannabis legal, if we had to make a case for legalization, we really wouldn't have to try very hard because there are substances out there right now that are legal, namely alcohol and cigarettes, that are so far more deadly and so far more dangerous and, and it appears to be okay with society to have these substances legal. So when you really look at the fact that they, the, the track record of the cannabis and all that compared to these two substances and all, then we realize that cannabis, you know, being the safest of them all, the fact that it's never hurt anybody, never sent anybody to the hospital or killed anyone and all, then it seems like, you know, just the common sense thinking type of brain would realize that uh, we don't really have to build a big case to get, get this substance legal because it really comes down to personal choice. What an individual, if an individual wants to use this herb because they know that it's safer and they, and they realize that the effects of it are mild by comparison when you look at alcohol and the, and the amount of people that it kills each year and of course cigarettes, I mean, it's, it's just incredible how many people die from that and all lung cancers and, and all the health issues and, and all the money that, that these things cost insurance companies and medical providers and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> we really wouldn't have to build a very strong case. <clears throat> but the reason that we do have to build a strong case is because we have three entities out there that are working 24 seven against keeping cannabis legal. And the, those three things are, one, the Department of Justice, and of course this covers Homeland Security, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and the Prison Industrial Complex. Uh, second is the law enforcement out there because they certainly uh, these cases that they make with cannabis and all that they're easy arrest i mean all they gotta do is pull somebody over for a parking violation or a speeding ticket or running a red light or just you know forgetting to use your blinker to change lanes even though we see cops do that all the time and and then they come up and search your car and find a joint or two and next thing you know they've added fifteen hundred two thousand dollars to their coffers over you know just this this small little bus and of course if it's if you have larger quantities or anything like that, of course, it's going to be a lot more money. But and then the lawyers and the judges and and all the court system, they all you know benefit from this. And the third group is the alcohol industry because uh, they do realize that if cannabis was legal, that this would somewhat affect their business. Although I don't think that it would be that big of a deal. Uh, against their business because most people out there that drink, whether they drink and smoke cannabis or whether they're just strictly drinkers or, or and a lot of the cannabis people don't, don't drink a lot like myself. I do have a beer every now and then or a little glass of wine or something, but I'm not, I wouldn't be of much benefit to the alcohol industry because I don't buy a lot of booze, but uh, uh, because I prefer smoking the herb and, uh, and I realize that it's way safer and, and not, uh, as far as the health risk to my body, it's, it's absolutely minimal, if not at all. In fact, uh, my experiences in the last 43 years of using this cannabis herb is that it's very beneficial to your health. And if it can keep you from, uh, you know, going the direction of becoming a hardcore alcoholic or even smoking a lot of cigarettes and all that, then it's way ahead of the game for anything out there. But uh, these three entities, though, they, you take the first one, the Department of Justice, of course, the, the Drug Enforcement and Homeland Security and all, 65 to 75 percent of every endeavor that they undertake, of the money that they spend and all, is for cannabis eradication and cannabis enforcement. And uh, we really are, we, we're, since the early 1960s up to today, we spent in excess of $5 trillion on this bogus drug war, one that's founded on basically trying to tell people what their personal choice should be. And the whole while we do that, we have this alcohol industry that just promotes Jack Daniels and hardcore whiskey like it's just sipping water and, you know, telling you to drink responsibly and all that. But 
but they, you know, they can't hide from the fact that you know, 150 to 250 thousand people a year are dying from the effects of hardcore alcohol use, like whiskey and stuff like that, and not to mention the people that are killed by drunk drivers. And and then if you just look at the health issues that alcohol itself, it's very corrosive on all the organs of the body. It's bad on the liver. It's bad on the kidneys. It's it it, it just in general causes more people serious health issues and this of course is a burden to society through the medical payments visits to doctors and all of that and uh, but when you look at what the department of justice has done since they've they put cannabis on the controlled substance act and all and we look at the 30 million people 30 to 40 million people whose lives have been turned upside down been arrested sent to jails in some cases sent to prison for this and all and uh, we, we, we take out the productivity of what these 40 million people could have offered our society and the, and the amount of good that they would have put in. It w they wouldn't be taking out, you know, we wouldn't have to be spending this money on there. These would be productive citizens that would actually be adding to our economy, adding to our society in a beneficial way. Yet, when we decided to, uh, you know, make cannabis uh, an illegal substance and all, so the law enforcement could prey on every citizen out there that wanted to use it, then we've taken away this productivity. And this translates into, into trillions of dollars also. So here we are, we're spending trillions of dollars to enforce this, you know, these stupid laws, this bogus drug war. And at the same time that we're throwing all that money away to do that, we're limiting the productivity and amount of, of things that these people could be a being benefit to society. And when you start adding all those numbers up and all, I mean, we go into the mega trillions of dollars. I mean, our, we could pay the debt off of what we've what we spent and what we've lost by, by having lost all this productivity. The pharmaceutical industry is another big push that's trying to keep marijuana illegal. They're the ones that are behind the medical marijuana because they know that if they can get cannabis, if they can get the public and the, of course the government's already on board with them, but if they can get them to convince the public that hey, this is a narcotic and we do have to control this and all, then guess what? Big pharmacy gets to control the, the manufacture of it, they get to control the distribution of it and all that. And the, the, the farmers, the growers that could be benefiting from that, you know, they're, they're kind of left out in the dark and, and this is wrong. And there again, instead of it being in a productive way for us and helping our economy and helping, the, helping our society and all, it's costing us money, it's costing us. It's, it's a neg negative effect and all. And this is just unbelievable that, we, that we're on this, this kick in this country of where we've got to, everything has to be so negative. It has to be so downturned that, that we, we forget about how productive it could be. We forget about the trillion and a half dollar hemp industry, how many jobs that could generate and all the, all the different products that tax revenues could be made off of. I mean, if, if you just take the trillion and a half dollar hemp industry and the products that are going to be sold from that, just the sales tax alone will exceed a hundred billion dollars a year, which is about three times what the current cannabis market is at this cartel price that we're at. And if we legalize cannabis and all, these prices go out the door. You're not going to be able to have city councils, you know, budgeting all these high dollar uh, budgets and stuff based on taxation of, you know, cannabis selling for $500 an ounce because it's not going to be at $500 an ounce. These strong varieties that are being sold today for around $20 a gram or around $500 an ounce, those were available back in the 60s when I was just starting out smoking cannabis and all. And we were buying these from anywhere from six to 10 to $12 an ounce. And even at 10 and $12 an ounce back then, we thought that was ridiculous that we were having to pay that much for them. But those varieties were just as potent as anything that we're seeing today. And that, of course, the lies that the government and all that they have to constantly be putting propaganda out. And one of the big lies that they've, you know, said all along is that the cannabis is stronger today than it was before and this is just physically impossible because all of these strong varieties that we're seeing today are just 
it's just that the seed and those types of varieties are now becoming available to the growers or have been for quite some time. But, but those varieties were around back in the late 60s and early 70s. It wasn't like that they didn't exist and we just invented them in the last decade or so. That's not what's happened. Now there has been a big effort on a lot of the grower parts to do different crossings and, and come up with different blends and stuff. But as far as if you take the most strongest cannabis, the Afghani varieties over there that are the strongest on the planet, they've always been that way. And unless they are crossed with something that is of a weaker variety, their potency is going to stay at that level. So this totally defuncts all of those statements that the cannabis today is stronger than that back then. It just isn't so. And if you look at the uh, Mexican cannabis that's coming up across the border. My God, that's stuff that they're, that's coming across the border right now that we're spending all this money to try to stop and eradicate and all this time and effort and all. It, it's nothing compared to the Mexican weed that used to come across the border that the old experienced growers back then were growing. I mean, there used to be some very good varieties coming from Mexico. Albeit they weren't, you know, 15, 20% THC like a lot of the stronger, you know, the ATF, the, the uh, chronic and some of those. No, they're, they aren't, aren't at that level of THC, but the Mishmacan, the Oaxacan, the Guerin, all those, all those were very Acapulco gold. All of those were very good quality of cannabis coming across the border from Mexico in the early 70s, late 60s and early 70s. And those, those were cheap. I mean, we were buying that stuff for $60 a pound, $5, $10 an ounce. And like I said, even back then, people thought that, that the ounce price was, was a little bit high, but, but at least the, 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 the quality and all that was there. Today, I mean, my God, most of the stuff coming from Mexico is, is, is just is piss poor at best. I mean, honest to God, I, I don't know what's happening with the growing scene down there. The only thing I can think of is maybe that the, the older growers have all died off and they've turned, it, turned the growing operation over to these young, young inexperienced growers and they've just been crossing this and that, whatever. All they're trying to do is just get, get a product out there with really no thought or, or any kind of uh, input into, hey, let's keep these strains pure and all that. And, you know, some of the growers in California and stuff in the different parts of the country, Washington, Oregon, of course, they're, they're growing these, uh, these pure varieties and keeping them pure, and, that, and that's to be commended and all. But, but the problem with all of that is is that the, those growers and the cartels, they're, they're, they're with a group of people that aren't really trying to get cannabis legal because they are making a lot of money by selling it for $500 an ounce, and this is wrong. We've got to get past that, that frame of mind that, that the cannabis sales is what's going to really pr bring about the money in this country because they're not. Once you legalize cannabis and all, I mean, even these stronger varieties at five to $10 an ounce, we can grow the, the amount of cannabis that the entire country could smoke can be grown in a very small amount of land by comparison to what, but, but what we grow food and stuff like that. And so the price is going to come down as a result. And you'll be looking at cannabis, even the strong varieties, you know, between one and two dollars a pound, just like tobacco is today. It's it's on the market today anywhere from a dollar fifty to a dollar eighty five a pound. Cannabis will follow this same path because we will be able to grow more than what can actually be smoked out there. And if you're producing more than what's being bought, all that does is drive the price down. And and it should. People shouldn't be paying an exorbitant price for something either a that they can grow themselves or have it mass produced to where it, it, it's fairly cheap. And that's what we're looking at. So the medical marijuana thing is a big push by a big pharmacy because they want to narcotize. They want to make it a narcotic, even though it's just an herb, it's not a narcotic. It doesn't fit, doesn't fit any of the criteria for what you base a narcotic on. But they want to make sure that the American public thinks that it's a narcotic so that they can control it and that you have to go to a doctor, get a prescription, and then they can keep the price up there at these elevated prices and make all these big profits. And that's wrong. And, it's, and medical marijuana is, is, uh, is, is a very good thing from the medical side of it in that it is beneficial for a lot of medicinal problems out there. And people should be able to use it freely without any, any prescription from a doctor. They should be able to grow their own or, or go and buy it from a local store that's you know buying it bulk from a grower. 
and, and paying a reasonable price, five to $10 an ounce, regardless of the potency, or regardless of the variety, that, that should have nothing to do with it. And that's where we've gone wrong. When the medical marijuana thing first started, it came out and they voted that out in California, this was a way for people to possess cannabis legally without being hassled by the cops. And so it was, it was kind of a give and take thing. Yeah, okay, well, we'll go to the doctor, we'll get a prescription, but at least if the cop stops me, I can't be thrown in jail for it and all. And from that aspect, that's fine. But that, that doesn't have to be like that. And it's big pharmacy that's pushing that. It needs to be outright legal. Turn this over to the free market and make the money off the sales tax off of the hemp products because that's going to be three times what even at the accelerated prices that they have, the cartel price today, the sales tax revenues from the hemp industry will exceed that by threefold, uh, even at the high prices you have today. So that's where, that's where we've gone wrong. We, we've, we've made this commodity, you know, it's just like taking a, a pile of dirt that you know is worth about 10 cents and you go to somebody down the street and say, hey, you know, look, I got this pile of dirt here and, you know, I know it, you, you think that you should probably be able to buy that for a dime, but you know, I'm gonna charge you a hundred bucks for it and, and people buy it. I mean, it's just, and this is wrong. And medical marijuana, the people, the medical patients out there, I want you to use this cannabis because it is a wonderful herb. And, and it's one of the things why big pharmacy is trying to control it because they know that if cannabis is made legal and it is abundantly available to people cheap, then guess what? People won't be needing their pharmaceuticals. They won't be needing their hardcore prescription drugs that have all these side effects and all these debilitating issues with them. And, and very few of them even work. I mean, they do abate symptoms in some cases, but for the most part, none of them really work. And you look at the medicinal effects that the cannabis brings and all without the side effects other than you getting high and feeling good. Gee, I mean, I know that's a crime to feel good and and to, uh, you know, enjoy feeling the way you do. That's, a, that's a, just a terrible side effect, I know. But at least it doesn't create all the complicated issues that most of the pharmaceuticals out there do. And you look at law enforcement. I mean, of course, they have every reason to want to keep it illegal because it's easy revenues for them. I mean, when you look at these little local counties, these, these little cities and counties and local state governments and all, when, when they make a cannabis bust, whether it's one joint or an ounce or a pound even and all, they know automatically there's $1,500 in the coffers just, just without even thinking about it. I mean, that's, with, that's on a, just a simple misdemeanor charge because it, it's not just the, the fine or, or jail time that you're going to do for the cannabis that they catch you with, but then they make you do the drug schools, they make you do the drug testing, they make you do the drug awareness classes and all that. All that is just more and more money that you have to shell out and put into the system and all. So it's, it's a money maker for them. Of course they're going to be on the bandwagon, but, but not all law enforcement's like that. I mean, we have wonderful groups out there like LEAP. These are law enforcements against prohibition. And these are, these are law enforcements, whether they're current or retired, that see how bogus this drug war is. They can see through the fallacies of it all. And they, see the, they see through the greed and the control and what the government's trying to do and all. That's what LEAP's all about. They're trying to end prohibition because they know that it's wrong to, to try to police what a person's personal choice, what they want to do for their personal self, and it's their decision, not somebody else's. They understand that. And that's why the government does the propaganda war that they do. I mean, have you, have you ever heard the government put out anything that said it? that said anything about cannabis, you know, they'll, they'll kind of say, oh, well, you know, you've got, you got all these killings, you've got these ruthless gangs, these cartels and all this. Well, none of that would exist if we didn't have this substance illegal. Look at the prohibition days. It was the same thing then. They made alcohol legal, boom. Al Capone, all his cronies, people just like him, hand over fist making money. All the people that died from getting murdered just to control the territory. Doesn't that eerily sound like what's going on today? It's exactly the same thing. So really for the cannabis smokers out there, we don't really have to make a strong case to make this legal. Because first of all, it's our right as a citizen, as a free citizen of this country, to make this choice ourselves. If we decide we want to drink wine, 
That's our choice. If we decide we want to get drunk on beer every night, people do that. That's because it's their choice. Cannabis is no different. And the fact that it's safer and has never killed anybody and never sent anybody to the hospital, doesn't have all the statistics piled up like all these other substances that are legal has done, there really doesn't have to be a big case built up for the legalization. And, and it's the American public sitting back and allowing the government to not only brainwash the public out there that doesn't use cannabis, because they're ignorant. They, the government tells them it's just like heroin. That's why we have it in Schedule One. The public believes that. They believe that if you smoke a joint, you're, you're no different than somebody that's got a needle in your arm or somebody you know, doing hardcore prescription drugs or any, any of those like that. And, and this is wrong. It's wrong that cannabis is even included in any of that. I think the drug war is bogus anyway. I think if a person has an individ their individual right, if they want to do a certain substance, there is no law or domain over that. And true, some of these substances like amphetamines and, and uh, cocaine and of course heroin, and, and they do cause deaths and all, but if you look at the numbers that they cause and all, they're, they're way low compared to even things like caffeine, coffee that you know kills anywhere from five to 10,000 people a year. Look at aspirin, how many people die from aspirin overdose? Perfectly legal substance out there. Cigarettes and alcohol, my God, 500 to 700,000 people a year. Add in the, the side effects of prescription drugs and the deaths from, from prescription drug overdose that people would not have to be taken if they were allowed to, to get these strong varieties of cannabis and, and get them cheap enough, people wouldn't be taking these oxycontins and these hydrocodones and these synthetic heroines and stuff. They wouldn't need them. And, and they wouldn't have the addictive properties that those types of substances offer also, not to mention the side effects and the burden that that puts on our health society. We're talking about this Obamacare and all, you know, nobody's stressing to anybody out there, hey, how about just trying to leave, live, live a healthy life? Here's how you live healthy and all that. And one of the ways that you can live healthy is incorporate cannabis into your daily routine instead of hardcore alcohol or cigarettes and stuff like that. People, I've been smoking, I mean, I, I've never made it, uh, I've never tried to hide the fact from day one when I started smoking to my family or anybody I knew and all, I never was ashamed to tell them that I was proud to be a pot smoker because I knew that I was taking the safest path. And I've been smoking cannabis every day for the last 43 years, with the exception of one month that I quit when I was 19 on a dare because uh, one of the people I knew that didn't smoke said, oh, all you people that smoke that, y'all are so hardcore addicted, you can't quit. Well, I made a bet with them that I could quit right then and I wouldn't smoke it for a month straight. And I did that. Quit, quit right then, quit right after smoking a joint, did not touch another one for 30 days, had no withdrawals. Yeah, I missed, missed having it and because I enjoyed smoking and all and the effects of it and all. But as far as being addicted to it and going through withdrawal pains and stuff like that, like you do through cigarettes or alcohol or, or hardcore prescription drugs and stuff, never saw none of that. And that's, that's the thing about cannabis. It has this, it has sort of a built-in regulating mechanism that first of all, your brain only allows a certain amount of it to be taken up anyway, so you can overdose. And it's not an addictive substance, so therefore, it, if you wanted to quit it, if you wanted to smoke once a month, you could do that and it, you wouldn't have any issues about trying to go through withdrawal or withdrawal pains or sickness or anything like that. It just doesn't exist. In fact, it, on the opposite side of the scale, the cannabis would be an effective aid to get people off of hardcore stuff like heroin, hardcore stuff like alcohol and cigarettes and stuff. You could actually use cannabis in a very beneficial way to get these people that are trapped in those cycles of addiction to get them off of it. And then they would be they wouldn't be addicted to a substance that, that just, you know, has all these horrible side effects and, and causing death and all. And of course, you know, we've talked about the hemp industry and all that and the trillion half dollar industry that's just sitting out there waiting. If we converted pressed seed and converted all this uh, cannabis and stuff that we could grow to fuel and completely take over the gasoline market that we pretty much import 60 to 70 percent of from mainly Arabs and 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 people out there that are that are sworn enemies of ours if we put all that money in our economy we our our country wouldn't have any debt we could have this blown out government like they have even though it would be trimmed some with the Department of Justice at, uh, through the prison system all because most of the inmates in there are, are in there from 
some type of drug war crime or something the government has said they've done, and most of that's cannabis. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're pumping all these revenues, billions and billions and trillions of dollars, and we're limiting people that we're ruining lives on just because they've chosen to use this safe herb and all the money that they could be putting into society and how productive that would be. And then we look at the tax revenues that we could be generating from the hemp industry and all that. It's win-win. Their method is lose-lose for everybody. I mean, it causes a burden on taxation. We have these just blown out government and Department of Justice, DEA, Homeland Security, all that. All these jobs of people chasing after people smuggling cannabis across the border or making arrests in local counties and stuff. This is just absurd. And, and we're, we're losing that gain that we would be getting by having these people working in society and being benefit to society, not a burden on society, not a cost to society. The average the average prisoner out there in prison, whether they're in there for cannabis or murder, burglar, whatever, is around fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year, and and this is a business. That, you know, most of the prisons out there now are run by private enterprise. They're owned by stockholders that that own stock, just like they do in all these other companies. So it behooves them to keep these prisons full and all, and they are part of the issues of why it's so difficult to get this law changed and all. It's not because cannabis is dangerous and that people are, are smoking it and just dropping dead on the street. That's never happened. If that was happening, at least you could kind of say, well, my, well, maybe we do need some kind of control and all that. But that's not happening. And it's not a danger. It's not a threat to society. It's not a threat to anybody out there, whether you're smoking it or not smoking it. It's not a threat. And, and certainly these substances that we have legal, like alcohol and cigarettes and all, they're a tremendous threat. And they're a tremendous threat not only to the health of people out there, they're a tremendous threat to people's livelihoods. People do crazy things and stupid things when they're that messed up on alcohol. Uh, the health costs and the burden on insurance companies and the medical field and all from the, all the side effects of all these substances like that. Where Where is the clear thinking anymore? I mean, sure, you don't have to be a cannabis smoker to see this. I mean, we, we, we're we promoting this to trying to get you to understand that because we've seen this for 40-something years. We see what's going on. The people back during Prohibition, the people who didn't even drink, the some of the, the main people that were, that were pushing to get it legal, they didn't drink, but they could see all the problems that it was causing and, and, and all the non-productivity that was resulting from it and all. And, and that's really ultimately what got it changed. And that's, that's where we're at today. We, we've got to stop ruining people's lives that are productive citizens that actually have a lot to bring to the plate. And we deem them as terrible and criminal because we have this law against cannabis. And it's just, it's, it's insane. And then we pump trillions of dollars into it, not only in the enforcement phase of it, but in the propaganda phase and all that. And then we, we let this trillion and a half dollar in hemp industry just sit to the wayside while everybody's out there trying to find a job and we have this soured economy and having to borrow money right and left from China and, and, and blowing our debt completely out of, out of whack there. This drug issue and the drug war and, and all the facets of it and all are the reasons we are in this trillions of dollar debt. I mean, the war is certainly there. They're, they're playing their part in all that too, but, but if we put these trillions of dollars that we've wasted and all this productivity, if we put that back into our society in, in a productive way, which is what it would be, we could, we could climb ourselves out of debt. But it's like the government doesn't want to fix things. They like things to be, they like to have this control. They like to be able to tell people what to do, even though they shouldn't be able to. They like having, you know, 95% capacity in the prisons, whether it's, you know, if we, if we need to pass an, a harsher drug law, the three strike deal that they did on crack cocaine, man, that filled the jails up right after Papa Bush passed his, his drug legislation in 1986. The reason that happened was because the prison, we'd built all these prisons and they, they were empty. And they needed they needed bodies in there so they could collect the fifty five to sixty thousand dollars a year off of them. And it worked beautifully, but it's wrong, and it's wrong to punish cannabis users because they're using the safest substance out there. It's safer than all the herbs out there. It's the only herb that you'd have to ingest fifteen hundred and sixty pounds of in one puff for it to even cause you death. And you wouldn't smoke that much in an entire lifetime if you were a hardcore smoker for fifty years of your life. You'd never smoke that kind of cannabis, that amount and all. 
So it, it boils down to really we have these three factions of government and, and big industry, pharmaceutical, alcohol, Department of Justice, which includes law enforcement and all that. They're making the money on this, and they don't care how many lives they ruin. And they'll, you know, we'll spray Paraquat in Mexico if you smoke that. Well, you shouldn't be smoking that because it's an illegal substance and all that. This is so wrong. Our society is smarter than this. We, we, the reason we're in such a deep hole right now in this country is because of this governmental control and all this regulation and stuff that's going on and, and stupid laws like the cannabis law and all the money that we waste on this. Let's, let's really, I mean, if we, if we really are sincere about turning our economy around, if we're really sincere about helping America and helping American citizens and all, then let's stop preying on American citizens because the 50 million people out there that use cannabis every day, they're no different than the people out there that are going to work that decide to stop by the liquor store and pick up a six pack on the way home. You're not, you're not requiring them to go see a doctor to get a prescription to go, to go to there. You're not charging them $300 for a six pack of beer when it's only worth about two or three dollars. And that's basically what we're doing with the cannabis. We're, we're saying, hey, you know, you got to go get, see a doctor, get a prescription, and you can only have this if you're using it for medicinal purpose. This is insane. And, and it's, it's wrong. It's just absolutely wrong. And these are the issues we've got to address. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see through this. It doesn't even take a cannabis smoker. But it's why the cannabis people like myself are so passionate about this and all is because we do see through all of this. We do see the bogusness of it all. And it's wrong. And we're sick and tired of living in this stupid world, this, this world that, that operates on stupidity and throwing money away. And, and, and then all they do is borrow money from China and run the debt up. And, and it, it's just totally unnecessary. So help us. Talk to everybody you know. But I do, one way you can help, and of course this, this isn't really going to help. We do get a small, very small percentage of this and all, but we have these new t-shirts out, one for the uh, Cannabis Corner here that you can order online. Go to the freedomfiles.us. I have one of the uh, Freedom Files t-shirts on here, but you can go to the freedomfiles.us website and click on the merch merchandise uh, click there, and you can, you can see all of these products available and uh, you can have have them done in different colors and and different styles and stuff and they're they're affordable and like i said uh, most of the money goes to the uh, t-shirt company that that uh, makes them and all but but this would be one way you could wear this proudly i wear mine proudly all over the place i don't care what anyone people come up to me oh, i can't believe you're wearing that and all and i'll sit there for 30 minutes explaining to them how how stupid they are to not be you know privy to to really what's going on out there so Buying the t-shirts, even though it's not going to be a tremendous amount, all the money that comes back to the Cannabis Corner or the Freedom Files from the sales of these t-shirts, we put right back into promoting the videos and doing different things to, to promote freedom and the freedom and liberties in this country. So if, if you really want to help, if you, if, if you don't really want to be a vocal advocate and all, Get a t-shirt and wear it. And if anybody asks you, hey, why are you wearing that and all, you tell them. Because there's no reason, there's no law in the land that should be out there that tells a person what they can personally do. And let alone have a law against a substance that is 10,000 times safer than anything they've got legal right now. And I do thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.